Um, the last item, effectively second to last, or last because there are no extraordinary items, so we'll ask um, David and Kevin to come up to talk about the Auckland Council parent performance report for the period of the last six months to the 31st of December. All right, so good afternoon, councillors. Um, I know you're pressed for time, so I'm making this very, very brief. Um, so if I go too fast, just slow me down, but I'll, I'll whiz through um, the presentation that I'm going to make. Um, so I'll, be, I'll very quickly just run over some of the achievements that um, are covered in your report. I'll go through some of the performance measures, particularly three areas that I think um, need a little bit of a watch, and then I'll briefly touch on the parent financial performance. Um, I understand some of the issues were also covered this morning in the group report, so um, I won't go into those too much. Um, let's wait for the presentation to come up. Thank you. You have it? It's PDF, is it? What is it? Sorry, I'm too much. Who's in control of up above? Good. Great. Under Excellent. Um, so I've just got some images of some of the key achievements. Um, many of the achievements are outlined in the report, so I just um, picked a few that, that took my fancy. Um, the first is that Auckland Council was awarded the City for Zero Waste um, Award as part of the C40 Cities Bloomberg Philanthropies um, Awards, um, recognising climate change action leadership, so that was a good thing. And in the same environmental theme, um, uh, we were recognised as the best project at the annual Waste MANZ Conference Awards um, for our resource recovery network. So those are, those are two good environmental successes we had. We launched a couple of websites. The Live Lightly website was launched, um, which provides Aucklanders with um, a multitude of ideas about how to live lightly and, and um, kind of minimise our touch on the environment. Um, and we also launched the Dare to Explore website and libraries, which helps um, children connect more into our, our libraries network. So that was great. Um, of course, there were lots of activities happening around summer festivals <laughs> over, the, over the summer period. One of the ones is um, Stand Up, Stand Out, which um, showcased 16 vocal, instrumental and band performances from 10 schools. Um, and my favourite is um, we launched glamping and pedal cars <laughs> at the Whangatau Holiday Park that took my fancy because I wondered if that was a solution to some of the corporate travel expenditure. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so moving on to performance. Could be a good, uh, an important move, Mr Chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of performance, um, we measured 43 measures. Um, of course, most of our measures are measured annually, so um, we can't measure all of them <laughs> at this stage, but 43 me were measured. 25 for each target, 18 did not. Out of those 18, some of them um, are just reflect changes in our business models, I guess, over the last three years since the RTP measures were set. But the three areas that um, I think are performance concerns um, are the building and resource consent processing times and customer mm -hmm. satisfaction, which um, are behind um, our statutory targets. They are getting slightly better, but um, they're still a little bit behind where we want them to be. Um, I understand that you covered um, the whole resource consent area um, earlier today, so I won't go too much into that. Um, our noise control contractor's performance is still causing concern. This was raised at the last um, Finance and Performance Committee um, meeting on, on performance as well. Um, as, as I mentioned last time I presented this committee, we have applied a 3% sanction across their invoices, um, and their underperformance will be um, something we consider when we renew contracts mid-year for those um, noise control activities. And lastly, um, AIM, or the City Park Service requests, um, they've, they've dropped performance, so currently, um, the um, request completed on time has dropped to 66% against an, a target of 90%. Um, some of that is agriculture um, backlogs, which I know um, the AIM team is now working on actively. Um, so, and, and I, I got a message before from the um, operations team from AIM um, who, are, who are really monitoring this and trying to lift performance. So that's just something that I think we need to keep a watching brief on. Um, and lastly, Financial performance. Um, 
I won't go through all these numbers, but just a couple of, of major impacts. Um, operating revenue is reflecting the fact that building and resource consent volumes are down. Again, I think you covered that this, um, this morning. So there's a $10 million variance in operating revenue against that. Lower operating revenue reflecting the lower volumes. And operating expenditure, um, we have a favourable $25 million variance um, against that, mainly reflecting um, less than expected spend in staff, professional cost, depreciation and interest costs. Um, so that gives us a net operating surplus of um, a positive variance of $15 million. So that's the financial um, summary. Um, I said it was going to be brief, and that, that's the end of the presentation. <laughs> You're a man of your word. <laughs> okay, well, I'm happy to move this report. We have Seconded. a seconder, Councillor Cashmore. Quick question? Yes. So with the um, interest and depreciation being lower, is that a symptom of the CapEx delivery being back? Yeah, yeah, that's the primary driver, as you, as you saw this morning uh, across the group, and it's similar to parent as, um, well, the numbers are actually at the bottom there. So um, 220, we're forecasting 511. We're, we're, we're running behind the forecast slightly at this stage as well, so that, that flows into less debt um, and interest cost appreciation both down. Catch up by year end, do you think? Well, the budget there, 605 million. The forecast is currently saying 511, so it won't be a full catch up. Um, and at this stage, 220 means we're, we're slightly below that 511 as well. So there'll be some catch-up anticipated, but definitely not to budget, no. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Sayers, I was just uh, looking at something. Yep, Councillor Sayers. <laughs> Must have been good. You're looking at Matthew. <laughs> no, thank you, Mr. Matthew's Chief. Matthew's Facebook page post. <laughs> I don't do Facebook. I was reading no, a Matthew, press release. Matthew, it's not yours. Okay, Councillor uh, Sayers, yeah, please. Yeah, th th Apologies, Mr. Chief. Um, yeah, thanks, Kevin. I, mean, I, was just, I was just wondering if it's worthwhile, because quite often at this point we can see the employee benefits, you know, tracking okay, and then we can see for the group, kind of at the end of the at the end of the um, year, uh, it's been over, you know, overspent, and quite often it's not the parent, but Auckland Council is, people don't really understand necessarily the difference between the group and the Auckland Council group, and I just wonder if there might be some wisdom in, for the last seven years, perhaps just giving all of us, all the councillors here, maybe even the, um, the uh, Chief of Staff for the Mayoral Office, a breakdown of the last seven years of, this, of, of the CCO's actuals against budget, just for, the, for that, um, for this, you know, uh, staff employee benefits line. So we can actually see which CCOs have been overspending, because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see a trend in there where Auckland, the parent, has been running okay. It might be other CCOs which are actually um, making the group um, blow out at the end of the year. So I'm just wondering if I could make that request uh, through you, Mr Chair, of the perhaps of the finance group or, th or you, Matthew, or that would yeah, be helpful. Yep. If, mm. if you think it will be useful, we will, yeah. um, without, if it doesn't require too much staff time, we'll do that. I, I think just, just need to be aware also that um, every, every number tells a story. So if we are going to do that, what I'd like to do is have the opportunity for the CCOs to explain. Uh, we have, we, usually what we do at the end of the year is we will tell you what the, the breakdown is. And as you say, Councillor Sayers, the, the parent in last year was about 14 down and it was, it was actually up in the CCOs. Um, but there were explanations given, which were, you know, um, there was the increased hop card usage, there was AT increased that, there was from memory lab services were brought in-house for water care. So there were stories behind them all. Yeah. World Masters games picked up. AT had increased staff last year. They've now dropped that down this year. I think, the, I the think it's finished. a fair point, Kevin. It's, yeah, so probably, it's probably what I want to see, uh, what might be useful, is any trend in a particular CCO. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could all go back through the annual reports, but mm -hmm. just, if it's all on one page, it makes it easy to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, th through the chair, we'll, we'll pull something together for that. Thanks. Right. Mr Chair, would, would that come with the narrative, though? Because a yeah. trend can simply be um, a, list, a line of numbers, but a, a, a line of numbers without the narrative is simply a random oh, list Kevin, of numbers. Yeah. Well, Kevin mentioned, yeah. That's what Kevin said. Councillor Cooper. Just making sure they were um, both here, though. No, I'm, well, actually, it's a little bit... It is around our... The issues we've had around... Um, 
our parks and our footpaths and all the sort of uh, maintenance, which you kind of touched on, but is this the place? Or is it more dumped onto your committee, Councillor? Just around the I fact that more we're behind, but it's operations, not it's are we getting it, giving any sanctions to some of these contractors and no, not paying them because they're not doing their job? I mean, I'm on footpaths with squiggly lumps of grass growing out of the footpath, not the sides, and all sorts of stuff like this. And you just can't keep taking pictures all the time as councillors and sending them in when you're in the dark, you know, in the morning. And I'm just really concerned yeah, there are, that there are penalties within the contract. Yeah. So are we? Yeah, is that where we discuss this? Because I just lose track of where we're supposed to discuss what. To be I quite honest, I think that's more through Penny. No. Well, it is around what we're paying out, so I, I, that's my concern. It's around the. I money. think strategic procurement. If we've got, if we've got, if we've got, if we've got so contracts oh, and we said we're going to pay people for yep. doing the and job Cashmore, and they're not doing it, Councillor Cashmore coming has the answer. Yeah. Coming to strategic procurement next month. Full report. Thank you. Yep. O eight hundred. Every difficult issue. Of my committee. This one, <laughs> Deputy Mayors. I've shovelled it back to yeah. him. No, I, yeah, that. and I, Mr. Chairman, I did just to be serious. I did raise the concern around the lower revenues around um, fees and user charges going forward with our revenue forecast for the LTP, um, eight percent below. But I guess I had a reasonable explanation. Um, earlier on around that, but um, yeah, that still worries me. Well, the Minister of Housing is pretty adamant he's going to reach his housing targets, so therefore there's yeah, but, the but goes hand in hand with that is employing more people to actually process the work, and that's what I have not been updated on, Mr Chairman. I'm really concerned about it. You can't do masses of extra stuff if you don't have the people to do it. And we've got to, we'll have to have an outlay. That's an opportunity cost for us, isn't it? And but our ha hand being forced, we will have to employ people if they will stay here. And that would be part of the narrative going forward of why we have staff numbers increasing. There would be explanation okay. to tie Yeah, so that'll be good, Mr doctor. Chairman. And that's something that's really important for councillors to note, that if we increase staff, it will be for, it will be for a corresponding increase in demand that we have to meet. And especially if it's... Um, something the government are kind of requiring us to do. It won't be numbers that we can be rushing off to our friends in the papers and saying, oh my God, we've employed more staff. Um, we'll need to have our comms really um, ready for that because we also can't be criticised for then not supporting um, building houses. It's a circular move it. narrative. Move That's all, thank you. Councillor Casey. You, no, no, I was going to move it. It's oh. been moved. I thought you wanted to have the last comment. <laughs> right, well, no further questions. We'll put the resolution. Well all those in favour? Aye. 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 There are no extraordinary items. I will close the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Order all together on the end. We've been great there for a while. Yes, all Disley. We've done that.